how bad is multiple sclerosis? What is the prognosis of MS? There's a tremendous amount of variability from person to person, but on average, how much time does it take to require a cane once you've been diagnosed with MS or to transition to secondary progressive MS? And what are the predictors of a better or worse prognosis? This video is based on research from the MS EPIC study from the University of California, San Francisco. Let's have some fun. I want to give credit to Dr. Bruce Cree, who's the senior author on this publication, who was very friendly and responded to my email and gave me updated figures, and also to senior author Dr. Stephen Hauser, who's had done a lot of great work at University of California, San Francisco, and did the famous genome-wide association study. Now, of course, I want to say that I can't really predict the future. No one can tell you what will happen to you with multiple sclerosis. There's just so much individual variability. I see patients who have had MS for 50 years and they're doing incredibly well, have minimal problems, and I see people with very aggressive MS and even at the time of diagnosis they have a very significant amount of disability. But sometimes it's helpful to think in terms of averages just to get a general sense of the disease. So I don't want you to think of this as a prediction of what would happen to you. Now it's known from prior studies that people who have an initial onset of optic neuritis or inflammation of the optic nerve tend to have a milder prognosis on the average. So optic neuritis often causes pain and vision loss in one eye with central vision loss and vision color changes and I have a separate video on this topic if you want to take a look. Whereas people who have transverse myelitis or inflammation of the spinal cord tend to do a little bit worse on average, particularly if they have symptoms of weakness or bladder control problems. And that's just on the average. People who have frequent attacks, so there's a short distance of time between their first and second attack, tend to do worse. Whereas people who have a long period of time between their first and second attack tend to do a little bit better on the average. And of course, people who acquire a moderate amount of disability early on are more likely to have a significant amount of disability later on. That being said, it can be shown that most of the long-term disability in multiple sclerosis isn't really driven by relapses. It's actually driven by progression and the increased risk of progressive MS as you get older. And even people with relapsing MS may have subtle unrecognized progression and I have a separate video on that topic as well. However, we're just talking about general averages. Now it's interesting that overall disability in MS is more correlated with absolute age than duration of the disease. So the study I'm looking at is looking at duration of the disease, but it turns out that absolute age, like time since you were born rather than time since you were diagnosed with MS or time since your first symptom of MS, Absolute age is the better predictor, and that's simply because older people are more likely to have progressive MS, and people who have primary progressive MS, who have an onset of the disease with progressive MS, are always, always a little bit older, although there are rare cases of teenagers or people in their 20s with PPMS. Now, this study, the MS EPIC study, looked at two different things. One is the proportion of people who required a cane to walk 100 meters. And the study refers to a disability scale called the EDSS, or Expanded Disability Status Scale. And I have a separate video on the technical scoring if you want to take a look. It's a little bit complicated, but basically an EDSS of zero means no disability. An EDSS of one to two could be considered mild disability. Three to four could be considered moderate disability. And at EDSS six, a cane is required to walk 100 meters. And at 6.5, a walker is required. So what you're looking at is a survival curve. So we start with 100% of people not requiring a cane, and then it slowly goes down. And you can see that at 10 years after diagnosis, only 4.7% require a cane. So a pretty low number, less than 5%. Now you could think that the average age of diagnosis of MS is around age 30. So you could think of this as a group of 40 year olds and only 4.7% of them require a cane. Now I should give the caveat that this study looked at people who started with relapsing MS. So these are people who have relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis who may later get secondary progressive MS, but it's not looking at people with primary progressive MS. So that's sort of a separate category. Now after 20 years, 16.2% of them required a cane to walk 100 meters, in other words had EDSS 6, but at 40 years it was a little bit over 50%. So the summary of this is it's not very common for younger people who start with relapsing MS to require a cane shortly after diagnosis, 
but if they'd had the disease for long enough, it's actually quite common. So if you think about people 40 years after diagnosis, if they were diagnosed at age 30, now on average they would be around age 70. So over 50% of people requiring a cane at age 70 is quite significant. Now, of course, 40 years ago, there were no disease-modifying therapies available, so maybe if we go forward 40 years, the prognosis will be somewhat better, particularly with the increasing use of high-efficacy disease-modifying therapy, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Now, the second thing they looked at is transition to secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. So initially, these are people with relapsing MS. In other words, they had distinctive periods of worsening, often with recovery afterwards and quiescence in between ep uh, episodes. But some people, as they get older, they have more of a slow and steady decline in symptoms. And this is known as a transition to progressive MS, or transition to secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to define the exact point at which someone transitions to secondary progressive MS or SPMS. Often it's recognized a little bit retrospectively just because the changes are slow and insidious and a little bit difficult to recognize and sometimes attributed to something else like aging or orthopedic injuries or just not recognized by the person with the disease or the doctor. But anyways, their data showed that after 10 years, only 6.4% had transitioned to secondary progressive MS. So again, if they were diagnosed at age 30 on average, this is a group of people who are age 40 on average, only a small minority have progressive MS if they started with relapsing MS. However, at 20 years, it was 24.2%. In other words, about a quarter of people had transitioned to secondary progressive MS. And at 40 years, it was over 50%. So not a trivial number of people eventually get progressive MS at some point. And again, we think things may be better going forward due to more common use of disease-modifying therapies and particularly highly effective disease-modifying therapies early on. Now, it turns out the prognosis in MS is getting somewhat better overall. If we look at older natural history studies like the Queen Square study, we know that the proportion of people who are acquiring a cane at a given age or a dur dur certain duration of disease is much, much less. So we're making some progress. Possibly it's due to disease-modifying therapies. However, some people believe it may be due to greater use of vitamin D supplementation, or maybe we're just better at diagnosing milder multiple sclerosis. There may have been some people who had clear symptoms of MS back in the day, but they didn't really get an MRI, and they did fairly well on their own, and so they never really got officially diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Anyways, I'd love to know your thoughts about this study. I have the link to the study in the notes below, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.